Hello, welcome to another show. I'm Sid, and in today's video, I'll be covering luminance in Spark AR Studio, which is the feature that allows for the creation of black and white filters. Uh, I'll be going over the, the patch itself, how to implement it and get everything black and white. And then on top of that, I'll be giving an example of something that you can do to step up your game a little bit. So in this case, it's just alternating between the foreground and background layer. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be a quite simple video, but hopefully you learn something and if you do make sure you leave a like dro drop a comment i love uh, responding to comments and don't forget to subscribe because i'm almost at 125 subs which is honestly crazy especially considering i haven't uploaded it in a few weeks now i uh, apologize for that i've been a little bit busy a little bit distracted but um i think i'm back now so yeah uh let's pause this video and we'll create a new project and get right into showing you how it's done so if I switch back over to this FaceTime camera, you see me again. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a rectangle to our scene. That will appear nested inside of this canvas. So you can add the rectangle and the canvas will be there automatically. You can do it the other way around, but why, why add steps for yourself? Next thing you're going to do is duplicate this. So you can do it here just by right clicking and hitting duplicate, or you can use Command D, which will duplicate it for you. I'm going to rename this layer foreground and this layer background, just like we would with a green screen filter. We do the same thing up here. So we're going to, under layers, we're going to change this default layer to foreground. And then we'll add a second layer and we'll rename that background. Now we come back to our scene and we'll uh, change this layer to the background. The background layer is now the background and the foreground is the foreground. So now if we highlight both of them, we can adjust the size. Right now there are these little squares, but if we hit fill width, and fill height. We now have a full checkerboard covering my face. It's actually two, they're sitting on top of each other. And we'll figure that out in a minute. Now we want to add materials for each one of these, which we're also going to name foreground and background. Just to keep things simple, keep everything in order. It's good practice when you're working on projects like this, especially with, when you end up with a lot of materials and layers and all kinds of stuff. And they all end up just being called materials one, two, three, four, five. So try to remember to rename everything, keep things organized. So now we've got those. We're going to come up here to our camera uh, in our scene. Under the camera, we're going to add segmentation and texture extraction. These two textures will now appear down here. And on the foreground, we're going to add them in. So under texture, on foreground, we're going to add this camera texture, which returns the camera. It basically is... Uh, is showing a virtual version of the original camera uh, on the layer that I've selected. But now we want, under alpha, we're going to check this box, and we're going to add person segmentation mask, which will cut me out from the background. So as you can see now, uh, everything is grey behind me. I can come down to background and reduce the opacity. You see I'm still there, but I'm actually physically separated on a layer. It's kind of hard to tell maybe, but yeah. So we've got that now. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll increase the opacity for now because we don't really need it down. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is under view, we're going to show the patch editor. And we're going to drag our camera texture inside of here. So this is the first patch we'll be using. We're going to be connecting from this to our luminance value. If we want to get to that, we want to add asset, import from AR library. Uh, they've recently updated uh, and added a lot more stuff. You can now add sounds, shapes. It's getting to be a lot more like Photoshop. Uh, maybe even cooler than Photoshop. But yeah, for now we want patch assets. And then under browse all, you should be able to find luminance. Now you could just follow these on screen instructions and figure it out for yourself. It's not overly complicated, but like I say, I'll be showing you a little bit more uh, how to alternate between layers. So stick around for that. We're going to import this into our project. And you'll see it appears down here under patches. So now if we drag this into our patch editor, we have this nice little luminance value. You could adjust the different values here. We're not going to though. So we're going to connect from the camera texture, RGB. We're going to connect that up to our luminance patch. And from there, we want to drag out and we want to add a pack. Now what this does is it packs all of this complicated mathematical stuff into a tiny little patch <laughs> it's pretty uh, I mean 
I don't really know how it works, honestly, but I know that it works. So by default, it's set at vector three. You want to increase that to vector four. And then we will come over here and highlight our foreground and background. Now we want to add, uh, our, yeah, we want to make those visible <laughs> inside of here. I also feel like I missed something. Nope, I didn't. I just want to connect all of these. Sorry, my mistake. So we have our camera texture, which we're connecting from RGB to luminance. And then from here, we want to connect all of these top three on pack. That's why we're increasing it to vector four. We need this extra one here uh, so that when we connect up to our background and our foreground, we can change this number to one and it will switch everything over to black and white. So I guess a zero is completely colored and 0 0.5 would be like getting to black and white, but not quite. It's an adjustable. Uh, two, I don't think you can go more black and white than black and white. So I would usually just like assume somewhere between zero and one with decimal points. So you can adjust the scale yourself. You can adjust the gradient in that respect. But that's basically the entire technique for creating a black and white filter. As you can see, then the foreground and the background are now completely black and white which is great. But what we want to do now is uh, separate out the foreground and the background. We want to create alternate layers. So if we come up here, we can duplicate our foreground and we'll call that foreground none. We can even rename this one black and white and we'll do the same down here. So this is for background none and we've got background black and white. Now these two layers we'll have the uh, default materials for them, but we're going to create new materials. So we're going to call this one foreground none as well. Just name everything. Like I said, same with this one, it will have its background layer by default because we duplicated it, but we'll create a new material, which we'll call background none. And we'll do the same thing that we did for the foreground with the foreground none. We want to texture extract. So we're going to add our camera texture to separate me out from the background and our alpha which will create separation between the layers. So now that we have all that in place, the next thing we're gonna do is add implementation so that we can alternate between these layers. We're gonna double tap on our patch editor and type in screen tap. This is the simplest way to demonstrate it on screen, but it will work with other things like opening mouth or like blinking. Uh, it just, it's a little more complicated and this is probably the easiest way to demonstrate it on a desktop. So we're gonna be using a screen tap, uh, which we're going to connect up from here to a switch and our switch is going to connect to these four. So we're gonna highlight all four of them and then under visibility, we're gonna hit this little yellow and we're gonna add them as patches into our scene. So now we have our background none, our background black and white, our foreground none and our foreground black and white. Let me drag them a little bit closer cool so what we want is for our background with no texture with no black and white and our foreground when it's black and white to be visible together and the same with the other way so you don't want both black and white layers to be visible at the same time you want it to alternate so what we want is we drag out from here and we're going to add a not patch now this is a boolean so it's a true or false statement and it checks to see whether something is true or false so we'll add this in and then what we want is to connect this knot up to the background and the foreground that we have for black background, black and white and foreground none. And then just regular connect from this switch to these other two. Now, as you can see, I'm segmented from the background. I'm still fully my regular color and the background itself is black and white. If I switch over here to simulate touch and I tap, see now it's alternated but the background itself is actually like still segmented the way it was before to fix this issue you want to come over here to background none and you want to reduce the opacity down to zero that way you can see the background again uh, obviously you could have a flat color if you like but what's the point if we're trying to alternate between layers that's something for you to uh, experiment with figure out for yourself what type of filters you're trying to create what kind of effects you're after but for this one yeah background none we're going to reduce the opacity so that that background layer itself is not visible 
uh, and then when we tap on the screen it will alternate between the foreground and the background on tap so if I zoom out a little bit I'll show you some of these patches I'll try and tidy things up right so what we have at the end of this is our camera texture which is the same camera texture we use to separate me out from the background connected from our RGB to our luminance patch you don't need to adjust any of these values although you could probably play around with them and figure some cool stuff out that's basically how I've been learning it's just uh, pulling things in and experimenting and seeing what happens when I adjust certain variables and numbers so we're going to connect from our luminance to this pack patch uh, which we've increased from vector 3 which is the default to vector 4 so that we can connect these top three and leave this one open. This is our this is our variance value. So if we set it at zero, everything's colored just as normal. And if we set it to 0 0.5, like I said, and it scales up accordingly. Uh, one is entirely black and white. From there, we have our two original textures, our foreground and our background texture, which we've uh, made visible as patches and connected up from the pack. Uh, in terms of the switch to change, the tap to change, we have a screen tap connected to a switch, which is connected to a uh, knot, and uh, alternates between the background and foreground being visible in certain layers. Uh, I'm sorry if this video was a little bit confusing all over the place. Like I said, I haven't made one in a few weeks now, uh, and I'm just trying to get back into the swing of things. I really do enjoy making these videos, uh, and I'm going to try and do a couple more uh, so that I have at least one every single day for the rest of this week. Uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate uh, all of the support I've got so far. I love the comments and the subscriptions, and it's it's genuinely, like, you know, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for watching, and if you uh, want to follow me on Instagram, that would be great. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Peace.